Before we dig into the topics of mysticism, magic, and spirituality, it's important for us to get a handle on truth, which is something that is extremely complex and not often talked about, especially in the way that a practitioner needs to understand. Hello, my name is Charlie and welcome to my channel. I'm a non-binary science fiction and fantasy writer who also practices creation spirituality and has done so for approximately, oh, 20 years. Let's get right into it, shall we? Truth is a very complex and difficult topic for even the best of days. First of all, I find it important to say that while I will sound very much like a relativist through the majority of this conversation, I do not reject the idea of objective reality. There is a testable reality out there that can be discovered through science, and you should accept that. Rejecting testable, verifiable, repeatable, repeatably studied facts does nothing but harm both your credibility with others and yourself because you cannot understand the Zell Shaddai, the shadow of God that we live in, if you pretend that it is different from what it actually is. So that's first and foremost. Second of all, mystical experience is personal and should not be conflated with empirical data. So let's start with a brief example here. So what we have to do as practitioners of the mystic arts is realize that it's very common that we will have to hold two separate and disparate ideas in our head at the same time. And it's not a hard thing to do, especially if you understand the nature of the types of truth that we are going to be discussing. It doesn't actually bring about any cognitive dissonance. And if it is, that's something that needs to be worked on. So let's begin with an example, shall we? I am capable of believing that human beings arose through a process of evolution over millions of years, arising somewhere in Africa and becoming the people that we are now. That our species originated through a selection bias of both who could survive natural threats, who was picked as the best mates, who had the best understanding of the world around them, until we get to the place that we are now. I'm also capable of believing that God created human beings from the dust of the earth and breathed life into them. These are often treated as mutually exclusive ideas, and they're not, and they really shouldn't be seen as such. And frankly, I have a hard time trusting people that take the position that they are mutually exclusive. So I'm not saying, let me say that again, I am not saying that it is our job to smooth out the edges between them. This isn't me encouraging you to go down some apologetics rat hole where you're going to have to figure out exactly, well, so when the scripture says that God formed us out of the dust of the earth, that means that when we began to walk upright, that... No. No. None of that. That's not what we're talking about here. One of these is an empirical, testable data point, that being the evolution of humanity. The other one is a mystical, spiritual, personal experience meant to explain our relationship to God, to the universe, and to everything else. If you really have to make it broader and find some way to connect it, it's like Carl Sagan said, we are star stuff. We are literally made out of the dust of the earth. The very atoms of the earth make our body. But that's not the important part of the story. It's, it's a valid part, and it's a part that we should think about and meditate upon. But the important part of the story is, and God breathed the image of God, the Zelohim, into them. This gives us our understanding of both our relationship to the divine, to the spirit, and to the world around us. We are made in the image of God. That has ramifications. That's also very humbling, and if it makes you puff your chest out and feel like you're better than other beings. Mm. You didn't understand what that means at all, because the entire universe is the Zel Shaddai. It is the shadow of God. So we are merely images of God walking in God's divine shadow. But that's topics for another day. The point is, it's important for us to hold both of these ideas in our head simultaneously. We can look at how they correlate with each other, how they correspond with each other, how one augments our understanding of the other. 
But our job is not to find one of these statements true and another false. Our job in the mystic arts is also not to accept blindly everything that we're told. The Apostle Paul says quite clearly, we are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, if you're blindly accepting something because it's written in a book, um, okay, I really wouldn't do that. That's not what any of this is about. Because books are flawed. People are flawed. When it comes to our understanding of how mystical and magical experiences actually function, it's very valuable to look to the ideas of Ibn al-Arabi, who tells us that there is an imaginal plane that exists between us and the divine, and the divine throws his words into that imaginal plane, and we collect it as much as we can in images that we are capable of understanding. You see, every prophet, every seer, every mystic, every meditator that has had a mystical experience has not ever understood that experience. And I know it's very popular for us to say that we have, but we haven't. You see, all of that experience has to be filtered through our lives, our understanding, our worldview, into something that we can comprehend, which means our understanding, our mind, and our worldview limits how we are capable of understanding that. So a first century Christian who hears that all are made equal in Christ Jesus, well, their culture tells them that men and women are different, so exceptions are made. Their culture tells them that slavery is just a natural fact of life. So they make exceptions to that. Those are not divine edicts that, oh yeah, oh, by the way, you can have slaves and women should just be quiet. That's the limited understanding and culture of those mystics, of those prophets, interpreting their world and their visions as they can best understand them. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I have many things to tell you, but you are not capable of hearing. So I will send my Holy Spirit who will remind you of all the things that I have said. Oh, wait a minute. And so it's right there. There's a lot of things we are not capable of understanding. And so the Spirit will continue to move amongst us so that as our culture develops, as our understanding of the world develops, we will better be able to understand and comprehend the world and the visions that come. Oh, that's huge. That's a big change in our understanding, and it's one that most self-proclaimed prophets tend to leave out. They just puff their chests out and say, Thus saith the Lord. And we're supposed to take them at their word that, A, they are actually hearing the voice of God, which, mm -hmm, that's a topic for another day. But we're also supposed to just accept that what they are saying is absolutely true and not filtered by the biases of their own mind. If God were yelling at a person to love the LGBT community and they were a staunch homophobe in a homophobic culture, could they hear them? Well, I would look at the story of Balaam and his donkey. This so-called prophet could not understand what God was saying because it was outside of what they expected God to say. Yeah. Culture and mindset affects how we experience divine truths, mystical. You can see this in so many stories throughout scripture where things are limited by our understanding. Jesus says that a, because of the cruelty and the hardness of our heart, God allows for divorce. And people go, see, this is because divorced people are awful. No, you didn't actually listen to the phrasing there. It's because of the coldness and the hardness of our hearts, we seek relationships that maybe we shouldn't be in, or we treat people in ways we shouldn't treat them, and thus not all relationships last forever. Mm. You see, it's a flaw in us that causes the need for this, because we don't understand what true love is. And I'm not orientated. Anybody who is divorced, I'm not. That's, in fact, the exact opposite of what I'm trying to do, because that's how that verse is almost always used. So when you encounter someone else's mystical experience, whether that be in divine scripture or somebody telling you about a vision that they had while meditating or an encounter they had while performing a ritual, remember, one, that was for them. And it will be interpreted according to their culture, their understanding, their temperament. And so the exact words, the exact meaning that they drew from it may not be and probably won't be. The meaning that you need to draw from. This is why scriptural discussions are so important. 
we don't gather together to read scripture and find out the most holy truth about what the words mean. We gather together to discover what it means to us and then to share that meaning with other people so we can see what it means to them. Because somewhere in the in-between there is probably what that actually means. The more eyes we have on a topic, the deeper we can actually understand. So yeah, do not buy into any philosophy that tells you, Now you have to bow because we have the exact only understanding of truth. No. I mean, truth may be in the document that they're waving at you, but it will be covered and clouded by the cultural understanding of the people who wrote it down, of the people who translated it, and of the people who are teaching it. So truth is relative, but also not. I hope that made sense. If it did, yay. I'm excited. This was a very hard video to figure out exactly how to say this, and I'm hoping this works. If you have any questions, please put them down in the description box below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and channel. It really does help me out a lot. If you have any other topics you'd like me to talk about, please put them in the comments down below. I would love to answer your questions and make sure that this channel is uh, helping you and not just some kind of weird ego vanity project on my part talking about things that I find interesting all the time, because that's pretty much all religion and spirituality. All right, until next time, my fellow wayfarers, may God bless you and keep you, and may the Shekinah ever guide and guard you on all the paths that you must walk. Bye.